Tucked away deep in the California foothills lies a seemingly mystical place. Enthusiast Stephen Child's own personal shrine to the definitive German brand everybody in the world knows, Porsche. My first Porsche was bought in 1997. In fact, I was based in London at the time. I came over to the States, picked up a car in Los Angeles, and shipped it back and kept it in London for th three years. Then we came back to California in 2000 and moved to the house you see here. Okay, so when we retired, my wife got a budget for the house and I got a budget for some cars since I'd been working too hard to actually have cars till I bought the car in 97. And what you see is the culmination of all of that. I think I exceeded the budget though by a lot. But it seems that when you put cars like this into a garage, they breed at night. And two or three days later, you find you've got another one coming and being delivered and put it into your garage. I've enjoyed the collection of cars. I've got a, starts with a, the oldest car I've got is a 1957 Speedster. The newest car I've got is a GT, a 2004 GT3. I've always been a car fanatic from when I was a little kid. I had the turbo picture on the wall like everybody else and always had wanted to have cars, but I'd been either lucky or unlucky that all the companies I worked for gave me a company car and then immediately kept me so busy that I couldn't have my own car and take care and enjoy that. Uh, the one is that I really have now finally got to where I wanted to be when I was a little boy, that I've got a lot of cars and I can enjoy driving them instead of just wishing. You know, pictures were all I ever saw in the occasional article. And now I've actually got the cars. Uh, the most special car is the 68 uh, 911 TR, of which there's very few made. The numbers vary from 19 to 23. It was everything I ever dreamed of. It was what I wanted, and it didn't let me down. In fact, it was kind of scary at first, and then I enjoyed it, and still enjoy it a lot more now. So I was, when I first got it, I was a little bit worried about driving it, but the more I got to drive it, the more I wanted to drive it. And so I really enjoy the car, as, and it's not the only one, all the cars get driven. That is sort of one of the absolutes that the cars have to be driven. So they may not be 100 point uh, show cars, but they're very definitely well driven. Well, the sound in the car too with this exhaust really makes it fun. You know what, you literally don't need a tachometer. You can tell from the sound, from the, where it's going, what level we're at. I enjoy the handling, the speed, quite frankly, it's not the greatest speed car in the world. It is a 68, but it's, I, it's the way that it, it actually handles the, the speed. On the freeway, it's a little bit of a droner, but on a country road, that's where all the fun kicks in. and it was a very special homologation car that they made, not at the factory, but at the distributors. It was a way around the homologation rules of 1968. And basically what happened is a stock 911T arrived at a dealership with about seven boxes of parts. And those seven boxes then made a car that instead of being a 110 horsepower car, was a 235 horsepower car was a six plug has a 12 plug engine and was super fast with about 235 horsepower they stripped it all out and it weighed around 1850 pounds The particular one that I've got finished 12th in 1968 rally and then two years later or three years later was sponsored racing in Northern Europe and Sweden and Scandinavia and countries like that by golf and as you see it now in the blue and golf colors are the color that was repainted in 71. 
Uh, originally it was just a tangerine colored car without the flares and then the flares were added to make it more competitive in Group B racing because with little narrow tires and that much horsepower it could get beaten by a lot of cars in that class. And so now I've got it, it's really great to have a car with that history, that performance and the visibility of it. It's extremely proud to own it and I love sharing it at car shows and other events that I can. So the only really what you call modern Porsche that you have would be the GT3, correct? That is correct. The rest of them, uh, the next newest car after that would in fact be the 95 Turbo. Would you say that you're sort of one of the Porsche purists? Uh, what, what do you think about the modern Porsches where they have replaced, you know, hydraulic steering with electric steering and things like that? Uh, I understand why the new cars are the way they are. Technology clearly moves on, and in many ways you could say they're a better car than the cars that I've got, but I enjoy a car that, to drive it and to have some feeling for it. And bluntly, not just Porsche, but nearly all the manufacturers now, some of it is legal regulations, some are political regulations, have now, what I, could said, what I feel, have had all the feeling taken out of the car. You are just sort of in a very nice car, and one car is quicker than the other and it's got pretty power but at the end of the day they are fairly neutral and a lot of the Porsche that are bought today are not necessarily bought by people who are buying them to really drive them but because they want the ownership of a Porsche and be able to say that they're what I call the cocktail party cars and I drive all my cars I enjoy my cars and I really enjoy driving and I've had in fact I had a 2009 turbo and I took it back after 250 miles because I just found it was awful in my mind. It was very comfortable, very fast, handled well, but anything I wanted to do, the car wanted to electronically beat me down and change. It would put a brake on for me in a corner when I was trying to go too fast. And I didn't think I was going too fast. I'd been through corners quicker than that. And I just don't like electronics trying to control my car. And that's the thing about Steven. He's a true petrol head as you're about to see. Uh, basically the first 10 years, I was pretty much solo Porsche, that was it. No other car existed and I built up the collection that I've got. And then I started realizing that, again, going back to variety is, is the spice of life. I really needed to expand a little bit and move into other cars. And I bought the Mercedes, I bought a BMW Touring, and then I actually moved towards Corvettes. Even though I'd been a, like everybody else who's got a European sports car that nobody ever owns a Corvette if you're a real sports guy. And quite frankly, the price, I bought one just as fun because it was so low cost and drove it for about three months and could not believe actually how well it was. You know, it may not be finished off like a Porsche, but it was very, very good. And I must admit that it was kind of nice to go and buy a tune-up kit for $200, which would have bought me a set of plugs in one of these cars. Uh, but the Corvettes just seemed to have, a, it was easier to get them, quite frankly. There was more of them around, and the different models they make, they had some sort of what I call sleeper cars in there that were fairly low-cost cars. I mean, if you can buy a ZR1, 19, I got a 1990 ZR1, and that's a car that was the fastest car in 1990. It beat all Porsches and Ferraris in pure speed and handling. And they've got other cars like that. There's a, a 1996 Grand Sport. And my latest edition, in fact, is a 2010 uh, ZR1, which clearly is a newer car, but it's actually quicker than my GT, uh, career GT was, and a lot more comfortable to drive around in and actually can take overnight bag with me in that one. I have 25 cars right now, and uh, in no particular order, I've got a 73 RS, I've got the Golf car, I've got a 57 Speedster, I've got a 1961 Porsche, uh, Roadster, I've got the 2004 uh, GT3, I've got a 1968 Porsche 912, I've got a 1995 Turbo, I've got a 1987 uh, Turbo, I've got a 71 Mercedes uh, Pagoda, I've got a 71 BMW Touring, which is a very unusual car. Uh, most people have seen a, t a 2002 TII with a square body, but this actually has a hatchback. Uh, I've got a 57 Speedster. I've got a 78 uh, Chevrolet pace car, Corvette pace car. I've got the 2010 Corvette uh, ZR1. I've got the 1990 ZR1. 
I've got a 1951 Allard K2. I've got a 1966 uh, Corvette convertible. And I've got a 1996 uh, Corvette GS. I've got a 1982 Corvette Special Edition. I've got a 1990 Corvette convertible. And then uh, I've got a 1990 uh, 944 Porsche 944 2S. I've got a 2000, well, it's actually my wife's car, I can't say it's mine. 2011 Mercedes E55. And she's also got a uh, uh, Cayenne. And then I've got a 2005 Corvette and a Suburban. Oh, and I've got a, 19, I've got a 1957 uh, Porsche Tractor, which is really unusual, but I don't take that very far. Well, what you see here is my other car collection of Porsches because clearly I can neither financially or physically have the room for all the cars that I want. So I thought I'd go second best and I try to collect one of every model that Porsche ever made and then went completely insane and started getting some of the colors so that I had three or four of each model and of its color. So we've got the one cabinet here and then there's another cabinet on the other side of the garage which is crammed full of cars like this. But say realistically, if you want to see any model Porsche between these two cabinets, I'm pretty sure you'll find what they are, except probably in the last five, six years because I ran out of space. So just like my cars, I had to stop because there was nowhere to put any more cars. But this is sort of been my, this is how I started off before I bought the real cars. I started with some of these cars. And then ever since I got the real cars, I started backing it up with the extra cars that I couldn't afford or park anywhere.